Hello and welcome back to Bampton Insight. Your feet are one of the most fragile areas of the body and with the amount of stress we put on them playing badminton, it's so important to have a good pair of badminton shoes. So in this video, we're going to explain what to avoid and what to look for when choosing a new pair of shoes and also further explain why we believe this is the best investment a badminton player of any level can make. Firstly, your standard trainer isn't good enough, but we're hoping that as you're watching this video, you've already realised that. We asked you here on our YouTube community tab and also on Reddit what characteristic you most look for when buying a new pair of shoes. And whilst many couldn't just choose one, there was an overall favourite. But there are seven characteristics to look out for when buying a new pair of shoes and we've ranked them in terms of importance and we're going to start at number seven. So in at number seven, we have the looks and aesthetics of the shoe. We're a little bit different in this one in that I really like a pink shoe. However, overall, we agree that the looks are the least important thing when choosing a new pair. And you guys agree with us, with only 6% of you choosing it in our poll. OK, so we're putting price down at number six for a few different reasons. Here we have a low range shoe, typically costing around $30 to $50, and it's made with cheaper materials. Therefore, it's going to offer you less cushioning, support, and may even be less durable. And we'll go on to these characteristics in a minute. And here we have a higher range shoe, around $120. Now, ask yourself this, in one year, would you prefer to pay for three pairs of shoes costing $40 each, or one pair of shoes costing $120? And hopefully they're gonna last the same period of time, but this one pair will give you more support and cushioning. It's a no brainer, and we fully believe that a good pair of shoes is the best investment a badminton player will make. At number five is the weight of the shoes. The lighter the shoe, the less weight you've got to carry around the court, right? And this is why brands market their shoes as being ultra light. But it is important to note that some cheaper shoes might be light, but are unlikely to have the proper support in place. But yeah, in general, we're not in favour of heavy shoes. No, we're not. Now, at number four on our list is the grips. Now, this wouldn't have come in that high on our list initially, as we're really lucky to be always playing on very grippy floors. However, many of you commented on this on our polls, and it's got us thinking of the nightmares we've had in the past playing on pretty much ice rinks, and it gives you no confidence at all. Often, the low-range shoes are made from cheaper materials, which we've already said, and these will wear away quicker, and this includes the grip. However, it's difficult to know how grippy the shoe's gonna be before you buy it. Often you might play in a hole that's so dusty, it doesn't matter how grippy your shoes are. It just creates a layer of dust over this grip and there's nothing you can do about it, apart from maybe wipe your feet on a wet towel at the side of the court, which we used to do a lot. Okay, moving on to number three is the durability. Now durability was one of the most common answers that you guys gave of what you look for in a new pair of shoes, with a lot of you saying you wouldn't repurchase or recommend a pair if the durability wasn't good enough. But what is good enough? Well, the durability is another area where the top end shoes will outshine the lower end shoes. And this is because they'll have been made with more technologies and better quality materials. And this is quite clear from the marketing from various brands. For example, we've seen the V Durable from Victor. You have the Tough Guard from Yonex, and we've also seen the Tough Tip from Li Ning. And this is generally why we'd recommend investing in a better pair of shoes, as they should last a lot longer. So when choosing your shoes, you have to make sure they fit your foot type. For example, if you have a long and thin foot, then you shouldn't go for a wide shoe. Now this shaped shoe is usually common in badminton shoes. So if you do have a thin foot, then you might want to opt for an insole to massively improve the fit. An uncomfortable pair of shoes will limit your movement on court and also give you blisters. Now a quick note on that, if you do get blisters a lot, then it's really important to wear your shoes in. We wear ours around the house for a few hours before taking them on court and some players even put them in the oven first to soften them up. And before we go on to our final characteristic, it's obviously important to choose the right size of shoe. And brands will differ with this. Both me and Jenny usually go up half a size. As well as comfort, support is the most important characteristic when choosing a new pair of shoes. Over 70% of you chose this, and we completely agree. Before making this video, we asked our Team GB physio what her, other physios and doctors would recommend when choosing a new pair of shoes, and here's what she had to say. The two functions of your feet are to be a rigid lever and a mobile adapter. Therefore, your shoe should support this. And this is huge. So let's break it down further into what you should avoid and look for. 
So firstly, this part surrounding your ankle should be nice and sturdy and you shouldn't be able to flop it over or bend it. And this is to provide good solid ankle support for when you're constantly twisting and turning, landing and jumping in badminton. And if it can flop over or bend it round, then imagine how little ankle support that's providing you when you land a little funny. Secondly, your shoe should have a hole in the bottom of it. If it doesn't, like this shoe, then look how easy it is just to fold. This clearly isn't providing any support when you're jumping, twisting and landing. Now, if you do have a hole in the shoe, like this, then it's really difficult to fold or twist, therefore creating a lot more support and top range shoes will have this hole. Now, if you're really flat footed, then you should go for a shoe with maybe more structure. And if you have stiff feet or play on a hard floor a lot, then you should go with a shoe with more cushioning. Now, many advanced materials are used in high-end shoes for cushioning to help reduce the impact on joints. Victor have this Energy Max dampening technology and Yonex have their Power Cushion Plus. Here, Yonex claim that their Power Cushion technology can rebound a raw egg from up to 12 meters. So we had to put this to the test. So these materials can help to reduce muscle fatigue and also impact on your body parts, such as your knees, both in the short and long term. We know a lot of over 50s that have suffered with their knees from playing badminton all their lives on hard floors and without well supported shoes. So don't let this be you. As we've said throughout this video, when it comes to shoes, you really do pay for what you get. This is because they've got lots more technologies invested into them. For example, this is what you get with a low range pair of shoes. And these are the technologies you get in a top range pair of shoes. And unlike rackets, even if you only play once a month, we'd really recommend staying away from this low range shoe and investing in a good pair. We hope you found this video valuable and have learned how to choose the right pair of badminton shoes for you. If you have, please give it a like and smash the subscribe button. <laughs> and in future videos, we want to review individual pairs of shoes. So let us know in the comments below which you want us to review. See you on another video. <laughs> Overall, we agree that the looks are the last thing we look for. When and these are the technologies that's gone into a high range shoe. And this, this is no. Why are you laughing at me? Mash the subscribe button. <laughs> Toby's watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Badminton Insight.